H.G. Wells, The Invisible Man. Read for you by Ed French. Chapter 16. In the Jolly Cricketers. The Jolly Cricketers is just at the bottom of the hill where the tram lines begin. The barman leant his fat red arms on the counter and talked of horses with an anemic cabman, while a black-bearded man in grey snapped up biscuit and cheese, drank Burton, and conversed in American with a policeman off duty. "'What's the shouting about?' said the anemic cabman, going off at a tangent, trying to see up the hill over the dirty yellow blind in the low window of the inn. Somebody ran by outside. "'Fire, perhaps,' said the barman. Footsteps approached, running heavily. The door was pushed open violently, and Marvel, weeping and disheveled, his hat gone, the neck of his coat torn open, rushed in, made a convulsive turn, and attempted to shut the door. It was held half open by a strap. Coming! He bawled, his voice shrieking with terror. He's coming! The visible man! After me! For God's sake, help! 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 Shut the doors, said the policeman. Who's coming? What's the row? He went to the door, released the strap, and it slammed. The American closed the other door. Let me go inside, said Marvel, staggering and weeping, but still clutching the books. Let me go inside. Lock me in. Somewhere. <laughs> I tell you, he's after me. I give him the slip. He said he'd kill me, and he will. You're safe said the man with the black beard. The door's shut. What's it all about? Let me go inside, said Marvel, and shrieked aloud as a blow suddenly made the fastened door shiver and was followed by a hurried rapping and a shouting outside. Hello, cried the policeman. Who's there? Mr. Marvel began to make frantic dives at panels that looked like doors. He'll kill me. He's got a knife or something. I, I for God's sake... Here you are, said the barman. Come in here. And he held up the flap of the bar. Mr. Marvel rushed behind the bar as the summons outside was repeated. Don't open the door, he screamed. Please don't open the door. Where shall I hide? This, this invisible man, then? Asked the man with the black beard, with one hand behind him. I guess it's about time we saw him. The window of the inn was suddenly smashed in, and there was a screaming and running to and fro in the street. The policeman had been standing on the settee, staring out, craning to see who was at the door. He got down with raised eyebrows. "'It's that,' he said. The barman stood in front of the bar-parlour door, which was now locked on Mr. Marvel, stared at the smashed window, and came round to the other two men. Everything was suddenly quiet. I wish I had my truncheon, said the policeman, going irresolutely to the door. Once we open and he comes, there's no stopping him. Don't you be in too much hurry about that door, said the anemic cabman anxiously. Draw the bolts, said the man with the black beard. And if he comes... He showed a revolver in his hand. That won't do, said the policeman. That's murder. I know what country I'm in, said the man with the beard. I'm going to let off at his legs. Draw the bolts. Not with that blinking thing going off behind me, said the barman, craning over the blind. Very well, said the man with the black beard, and stooping down, revolver ready, drew them himself. Barman, cabman, and policeman faced about. Come in said the bearded man in an undertone, standing back and facing the unbolted doors with his pistol behind him. No one came in. The door remained closed. Five minutes afterwards, when a second cabman pushed his head in cautiously, they were still waiting, and an anxious face peered out of the bar parlor and supplied information. Are all the doors of the house shut? asked Marvel. He's going round, prowling round, He's as artful as the devil. Good Lord, said the burly barman. There's the back. Just watch them doors. I say. He looked about him helplessly. The bar parlor door slammed, and they heard the key turn. 
There's the yard door and the private door. The yard door. He rushed out of the bar. In a minute he reappeared with a carving knife in his hand. The yard door was open, he said, and his fat underlip dropped. He may be in the house now, said the first cabman. He's not in the kitchen, said the barman. There's two women there, and I've stabbed every inch of it with this little beef slicer, and they don't think he's come in. They haven't noticed. Have you fastened it? asked the first cabman. I'm out of frocks, said the barman. The man with the beard replaced his revolver, and even as he did so, the flap of the bar was shut down, and the bolt clicked, and then, with a tremendous thud, the catch of the door snapped, and the bar parlor door burst open. They heard Marvel squeal like a caught leveret, and forthwith they were clamoring over the bar to his rescue. The bearded man's revolver cracked, and the looking-glass at the back of the parlor starred, and came smashing and tinkling down. As the barman entered the room, he saw Marvel, curiously crumpled up and struggling against the door that led to the yard and kitchen. The door flew open while the barman hesitated, and Marvel was dragged into the kitchen. There was a scream and a clatter of pans. Marvel, head down and lugging back obstinately, was forced to the kitchen door, and the bolts were drawn. Then the policeman, who had been trying to pass the barman, rushed in, followed by one of the cabmen, grabbed the wrist of the invisible hand that collared Marvel, was hit in the face and went reeling back. The door opened, and Marvel made a frantic effort to obtain lodgment behind it. Then the cabman collared something. I got him, said the cabman. The barman's red hands came clawing at the unseen. Here he is, said the barman. Mr. Marvel, released, suddenly dropped to the ground and made an attempt to crawl behind the legs of the fighting men. The struggle blundered round the edge of the door. The voice of the invisible man was heard for the first time, yelling out sharply as the policeman trod on his foot. Then he cried out passionately, and his fists flew round like flails. The cabman suddenly whooped and doubled up, kicked under the diaphragm. The door of the bar parlor from the kitchen slammed and covered Mr. Marvel's retreat. The men in the kitchen found themselves clutching at and struggling with empty air. "'Where's he gone?' cried the man with the beard. "'Out! This way!' said the policeman, stepping into the yard and stopping. A piece of tile whizzed by his head and smashed among the crockery on the kitchen table. "'I'll show him!' shouted the man with the black beard, and suddenly a steel barrel shone over the policeman's shoulder, and five bullets had followed one another into the twilight whence the missile had come. As he fired, the man with the black beard moved his hand in a horizontal curve, so that his shots radiated out into the narrow yard like spokes from a wheel. A silence followed. Five cartridges!' said the man with the black beard. That's the best of all. Four aces and the Joker. Get a lantern, someone, and come and feel about for his body. 